Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor as we preview the best of the action from Newbury, of course, live on Sky Sports Racing and Air as well. Some really competitive contests up there in the studio. With me is Declan Ricks. Deck, we're in form. The triple hat trick, hat <laughs> trick landed. That's it. Yeah, hopefully viewers um, um, benefited from the boost yesterday. You, you and Sam's yeah. nap was uh, um, a boost in a, in a double, wasn't it? Yes, and yeah, then, in the double. And then El Jan Bruegel went in. Good El Jan. So, yeah, it was a good week for the show. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can continue. But no Sammy boy here today to celebrate his own nap. No, we don't know whose stag do he's on. Our producer Ben told us it was his. So we're slightly... <laughs> He's slightly confused. Maybe he hasn't told us because he doesn't want to invite us to his wedding. So he's, we're going to have to... He's kept that quiet if it is, is yeah, his own has, stag. If, if it yeah. is his. So we'll find out next week for sure. One person who might be able to tell us who stag do Sam is on is Bet Victor's Chris Poole, who is standing in for us again. So Chris, over the moon to have you back with us. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks, Kate. I think it, I've got a feeling it's his own stag do. He's definitely getting married, but um, my invite must have been lost in the post. So thanks for that. Same. Oh, Same. OK, yeah. then. Sammy Boswell, the slippery serpent. I what? know. Well, he's not invited back to the sofa, then, is he? <laughs> All three of us slightly awkward. <laughs> Yeah, well, definitely we'll be pulling Sam Boswell up on that next week. But before then, we've got some business to attend to in terms of the racing front. Now, before we get stuck into the racing, a reminder as ever, please do gamble responsibly. Our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction. Right, we're going to begin at Newbury with the 130, the Group 3 World Trophy stakes for the three-year-olds and over over five furlongs. Now, Anaf heads the way at three to one for Mick Appleby and Jason Watson. So, deck five furlong group sprint. Who turns it to win? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's 11 runners, but seriously competitive. I don't think there was many you could rule out here. Uh, what I would say is, you know, if Anaf does come back to his very best and relief rally, if she comes back to her best, they probably will take a bit of beating. But, you know, Anaf is having his second run back, having been sick out in the Middle East. Um, and relief rally, looks to me so far like she hasn't trained on as a three-year-old this year or potentially she's been wanting this drop down to, to five furlongs and it's a race I think with plenty of pace Kate there's there's a few there who like to go forward and I just think it could set up for a close and I think significantly could go well at, at a whopper price he's not even on the graphic there now but I think he's 25 to one uh, he's been in, he's been, he started the season well had, had a run at uh, Newmarket to blow away the cobwebs and then he ran very well behind seven questions at Newmarket uh, over five furlongs um, and after that, then he, he had a bit of a, a mid-season break, maybe a little bit of a setback. But the Julie Camacho team at the time uh, weren't running, weren't horse, horses weren't going too well. They're in much better order now. This is him out in the middle of the track with the noseband, finishing second to Anaf in the Portland last year. He is 12 pounds worse off with Anaf, which doesn't make it ideal. But uh, I think he's an improved horse, whereas Anaf has got question marks. And as you can see here, he was very unlucky not to get up late. I think just past the line he was up. So in a race that I think could set up for a closer uh, on, on, and with a horse who don't, won't mind ground conditions, hopefully significantly could run into the three as an each way bet. And, you know, with a bit of luck, he might take the lot. Might even then win as well. But, yeah, good to look back at that Portland because, as you say, Anaf then, who's the three to one favourite, just pipping him then in that one of September of last year. So timely reminder of that intertwining form line for these two horses. So it's significantly for Deck then, Chris. Who did you like? Uh, well, I suppose the first thing to mention is um, that, that there's a lot of rain sort of potentially due um, at Newbury looking like, looking around the, the almost like the time of the first race or just a bit before. And if it does lash down, this can make things even more tricky than they already are so i, I sort of would recommend that if, if you're having a bet you might want to just be careful um and wait and see what the weather does because it could turn things on its head it's good to soft at the moment um i agree with a fair few things deck said but having said that i have gone for um uh, a bit of a pace run a democracy dilemma i have got doubts about enough um you know sparingly race this year five furlongs is a bit short I think for Anaf, I totally agree with him, Relief Rally. We really don't know what we're going to get with her. She's only raced twice this year and potentially hasn't trained on and surely hasn't been easy to train. So I just thought Democracy Dilemma would, would, would run solidly. She travels really, really well, Democracy Dilemma. Now, I will be leaning, Kate, but, um, towards the end of the race because it's bound to be getting caught near the end if it does front run. And um, I don't know if you two are leaners, but I seem to sort of like lean, <laughs> like, or lean to the left a bit further, you know, especially especially at places like Lingfield, where the last furlong goes on forever. But I'm a bit of a leaner 
when I've got a, when I've got a leader that's getting caught. So I, I, I'd probably be horizontal by the time um, by the time we get to the line. But I thought it, I thought it was around the ten to one mark. It, 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 it had a chance, and, and you know they 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 are sometimes difficult to peg back at Newbury, but. I do take Dex's point that it could be set up for a closer, but it is a really tricky race. And, and do bear in mind that if it does start lashing down, I, I certainly wouldn't wouldn't um, be too keen as, as keen on Democracy Dilemma. But I'll give it a chance. I thought it was a fair price. Chris Valina, as we're now going to dub him going forwards. <laughs> but yeah, the weather again, potentially going to play havoc. So not entirely sure. I'm hoping the weather, if it does come, the rain, as we're expecting, is going to be later in the afternoon, but it's changing all the while, as Chris has just said. So hopefully it's not going to hinder Anaf then for me, because I guess for me, in terms of this horse here, it's probably less punting tact. More proving a point here, really, because, of course, I sided with him last time out at Haydock in the Group 1 Spring Cup. I went for a big swing with him, just thinking how wide open and, frankly, just chaotic the division is. So, went with Anaf then, and um, at least it was proven that you could go with a big swing because Montesib, of course, went and won the race. But Anaf, however, ran no way near as bad as it initially looked. And, of course, I was watching him like a hawk because I sided with him at 28 to 1. But instantly, we knew the high draws were inconvenienced. He also got stopped, squeezed a few times and coming to challenge with his run. Now, not saying he would have won, but he surely would have been closer than 15th. Now he's a 3 to 1 favourite in here. Slightly annoyed by that, but as I would have hoped, <laughs> people might just have... I guess missed him to an extent. But then you look at this run on his reappearance start. This was a race he was bidding to become the third dual winner of since about 2015, I think, at Lingfield in February over six furlongs, conceding way to around start and the finish he was compromised by in that could well have won. But obviously, if I siding with him in a group one last time out, I'm going to have to keep the faith with him in a group three. So I'm going to stick with Anna for deck. You're with Significantly and Chris is with Democracy Dilemma. Then do let us know in the comments section below who you are siding with with that opening contest for us at Newbury. As we move on to the 240 at Newbury, 0 to 105 handicap, three year olds and over, over 10 furlongs. Competitive betting heat in here. Flying Frontier is the one who is currently heading the market. Chris, I believe you're keen enough on this four to one shot. Yes, again, Kate, like we said, it's it, 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 you know, if it, the rain, it's a, it's a tr tricky old race. But I did like um, Flying Frontier last time. I, I thought the performance was, was good at Sandown and. Um, I didn't see uh, I didn't see the the, the, the horse in in third um, uh, reversing it. I think there's a fair bit to come with this. All definitely definitely got the trip. Um, did, you know, still, still a little bit green actually last time I thought, and I didn't think the handicapper had been had been very mean at all on Flying Frontier. I thought it was a solid enough shot. Um, again, uh, like I say, a tricky race. I'd be bang against Quietness. I wouldn't fancy Quietness at all. I think. Um, I think it's probably too high in the handicap now and the form of last time didn't stack up. So I'd be against quietness. Um, and I thought Flying Frontier, yeah, the more I watched that back the last run, I think it probably had a little bit up its sleeve. Um, and it's going the right way. And uh, James Tate's banging home a few winners now. I don't, don't think he was a bit quiet earlier in the season, but... Um, they seem to be running better now. And I thought, in, like I say, in a tricky race, I thought it was a fair price. That was quite damning them of quietness. I'm going to leave that for now. I'll, <laughs> co I'll come back to it. But we were just seeing Vasil then a Flying Frontier beating involvement at Sandown, which might nicely tee you up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm hoping involvement can, uh, can turn the form. Um, to be fair, uh, you know, it's not a strong view. I can see absolutely see Chris's view, and I thought Chris's horse done well to win at Sandown because he probably got, um, he probably gave them a little bit of a of a head start. But uh, just looking at involvement, you know, I think he's still progressing. I think that was just a marginally a career best again last time out, and he's by Lope to Vega out of um, out of a mare who was third in the Oaks a few years ago. You know, he's bred to be a a really smart horse, but he's one now. I'm hoping the rain can come for because I think it was good ground that day at Sandown, and he just looks like a horse to me who's travelled straight strongly and kind of grinds away so on good ground he's probably uh, vulnerable to those horses with, with a change of gear and this was certainly the case this day uh, at Dovel for all this was a strong listed race won by a uh, ombudsman who's you know progressing like a horse who's going to be uh, a, a group one performer but look um, 
he's, a, he's got William Buick riding him. He's still in good order for the Chris Ritz, And like I say, he, he's got a good pedigree. I still think there's a little bit of upside to him. And um, I'm going to put my trust in Bill Buick doing the steering to, to reverse the form. And uh, if the rain comes, as I say, I think it definitely will suit this lad because uh, I do think he likes to get his toe in, which is obviously the case with plenty of those Lope de Vegas. Yes, again, plenty on the pedigree side then for involvement. Now, I've let a little bit of a dust settle before making the case for quietness after Chris, as I say, was so damning about quietness, his chances <laughs> in here being high enough in the handicap. But now we're going to dive properly into the trends later on. So just as a little sneak then for that for now. But of course, I ran the trends against this race from the last five or six renewals for this. And uh, the horse that came out on top of those was was quietness because there were lots of specifics. You wanted a three or four year old rated 90 to 95 low draw ideally middle to low no real running style four runs in a season first last time out in a handicap three weeks or a month since that most recent start. The horse who takes five of the six notable boxes is quietness. Four year old filly rated 95 so the top of the bandwidth I want low draw in four one last time out three week turnaround from that success from last time out as well. The only thing she falls down is, is runs the season. She's had six instead of four but in those six runs she's won at five of them including her seasonal debut which we're seeing here at Windsor in May. Her first career success as well on stable debut in a handicap for only the second time and for all it was as you'll see only a narrow success you just thought at the time she has scope for plenty more which she clearly has proven and i still think that there is plenty more to come then from quietness still just those signs of greenness at this stage which why you just thought that you were going to have that further scope then in terms of the handicap so hence why she's been able to rack up that bit of a sequence and unpopular opinion then according to Chris Paul but I think that quietness still has more to offer then so definitely divided on that front Chris with Flying Frontier and Deck with involvement again do let us know who you fancy for that contest in the comments section below now we're on to the 315 at Newbury the group two mill reef stakes for the two-year-olds over six furlongs powerful glory is favorite for trainer Richard Fahey has won this twice, most notably with Ribchester in 2015. Deck, you've got 12 to 5 joint favourites in here, your favourite prices. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We've got our South African trader back on the show <laughs> again. Uh, yeah, look, a 10-runner Mill Reef, and it's a, another seriously competitive race. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, it was another chunky shortlist for me, to be honest. It, it was hard to rule many of these out, but uh, I was just, I was really, I don't know about you guys, but I was really impressed with what Powerful Glory did at, at Ponty on, on debut. Um, he was so impressive, and I think no matter what way you, you look at that race, everything about the form suggests it's strong. The distance he won, the time was very good as well. I think the second, third, and fourth have all boosted the form to a, a, um, a certain degree. The third especially bolted up in um, at Kempton in a maiden and and you know then the visual impression that he left as well he just he really really did impress me and it was interesting now Richard Fahey was interviewed on, on Sky Sports Racing earlier in uh, in the week and you know he, he was very very sweet on this horse and I, you rarely see Richard like that now and he won this race with, with Ribchester a few years ago so I'm hoping uh, history can repeat itself uh, again another one like Chris and yourself have pointed out with the rain we don't know what's going to happen yeah. um, he is by Cotai Glory and he went on good to firm ground the last day but I did have a look back through his pedigree um, he's actually he's from the family of Marek who was a mud lover so you know as long as the ground maybe doesn't get bottomless it should suit him but yeah there was just something I really Really liked about him now he, he looked a potential top notcher and I'm going to give one more horse uh, that ha, ha, that's had one run a quick mention that's Sarab Star for Jack Hannon he really impressed me again at, at Salisbury uh, I, he, there was just something really likeable about him but he did it through all greenness and I just get the feeling uh, he could take a massive step forward here so I might have a little win bet on him at around 14 to 1 as well so yeah two once race horses for me in this race Ooh, the unexposed angle then for you the main play though being a powerful glory all yeah. the same the mudders in the family for deck chris who do you like yeah 100 percent agreement with deck here just just to clarify um sam has just whatsapp me and he is on a stag do so clearly i wasn't invited so thank <laughs> you. Um, he's in, he's in portugal. 
He's on Portugal. We're filming this early, so if he's up this early, he couldn't have done it, had a great night last night for sure. Anyway, <laughs> uh, getting back to getting back to the racing. Yeah, powerful glory at Pontefract. That was mightily impressive. Um, plenty of readies for it before the race, um, and, and travel uh, even a little bit keen, if anything. And I, I was I was hugely impressed. I think the forms worked out fairly well. Um, as Dex says, Ribchester. Uh, you know, I think they, they think they got a good one here. Um, and I, I was, yeah, you know, like I say, I was just, I was just so impressed. I think if there is a, a potential star in the race, it will be powerful. Glory Shadow, you know, like, of course, it did run very well in the gym crack, um, very solid. Uh, but I, you know, the more, like I said, more, more look at what Powerful Glory did first time out, and the fact there was plenty, of, plenty of money for it. They clearly knew what they had there, and the fact the forms worked out. Um, you know, like it, hopefully it doesn't rain too much uh, and and doesn't doesn't spoil it at all. But um, I think we might see a really good performance from Powerful Glory. I winced as I saw two twelve to five <laughs> go up on the go up on the screen there. I, I, I'd expect him to go our favourite though um, over over the Godolphin horse. To be honest, especially how strong it was last time. Probably get a little might get a little bit bigger on Saturday. Um, who knows? There's there's you know like you say there's there's any there's any amount in the race with chances. But um, from my from my view, if there is a potential star or another Ribchester or anything near it in the race, it it, it will be Powerful Glory. So. You know the market will be very significant clearly on Saturday, and and things might change if it rains. But yeah, I could I I'd be pretty confident that the SP won't be twelve to five. Mind you, there, there, there a few SPs do go um, these what as you <laughs> say the South African odds these days. <laughs> Keep the twelve to five as long as we can. Just because well, be I, fair, I if, love... if, if, if you're having a fiver, that's probably why it's up. But if you're having a fiver, it's very easy to work out. So it, uh, it is that exactly. Yeah. And also, I want to ask you, what's more favoured, Sam Boswell? They're messaging, and what's happening? at 10 a.m. his time. Has he gone to bed yet or has he just had a tame night and he's waking up? What do you reckon, Dick? I don't know. I think as we saw as uh, as we saw in Pop World a few weeks ago, uh, Sam's got a rogue night in him, hasn't he? He has, and that's why I would almost <laughs> be he hasn't gone to bed yet, to be honest, if he is on a stag do. Anyway, we'll find out the answers to that next week because I'm hopefully going to give you a winner then with Shadow of Light taking on the two lads who are both with powerful glory here. Tricky, but great race, obviously, that this is. But I like proven form. I like experience where possible. That's what we've got with Shadow of Light in here in the Godolphin Blue. Three starts so far. We're seeing him winning his debut at Yarmouth. And Yarmouth form is something I never, ever am snobby about or dare overlook as we see some fair animals unleashed at Yarmouth and this lad looked exactly one of those where he was really well back this day makes sense given that he's a close relation to the dual six furlong group one winner Earthlight so this trip clearly is a one for him at this stage he followed up under a penalty next time and before being undone last time out in the group two gym crack by positional bias of the winner in comparison to where Shadow of Light found himself only going down by three quarters of a length in the process as well. So I think he's a proper one. Hopefully he'll prove it. I'm taking on the lads then, so a bit of disagreement there. Again, do let us know who you fancy. And also, if you are enjoying the show, a reminder to subscribe on YouTube so you never miss an episode. Right, we're going to leave Newbury there then, and it's chaotic weather. We're going to head up to air where we're pretty confident, bizarrely, about the Scottish weather, yep. <laughs> that it's going to stay fair. Not that it's probably going to make our task any easier to try and find the winner of the Air Gold Cup, though. Heritage Handicap. Three-year-olds and over, over six furlongs at 3.35 at air. 15 to 2 the field, headed by American Affair. Chris, who do you like? Um, well, firstly, when I knew I was on this week, I thought, you know, Sam's obviously timed his, timed his run to perfection again, <laughs> yes. going, going on his stag do, and we've got the Air Gold Cup to sort out. <laughs> I'd have much rather had the leisure or something last week. But when I, when I kept coming back to Rohan here, and the more I looked at it, the more I think this has been a plan, a long-range plan this entire year for, for Rohan. Um, it's incredibly well handicapped on its old form. Yeah, of course, it's not getting any younger. Uh, Tom Creeley's riding it the last twice uh, with a visor on. It ran at Goodwood, which would never, ever have been Rohan's track, and it was dropped a nice bit for that, so that, that, that didn't look like um, its day. It ran really well here at Ascot that, we, that, that we're seeing from an impossible situation. They went incredibly slow in this race. It was a very mm. strange sprint, but it's, to me, I think Rohan retains a fair bit of its ability. It always comes good this time of year. It's running all the big sprints. Obviously, it's, a, it's group three to its name as well, and there's one that woke and whatever, but I, I just think this might have been 
Now, obviously, you know, you could say a lot of horses have been aimed at this, but but sort of have they? They've had a lot, you know, they've all run in in a, in a lot of uh, different races this year. I, I kind of think they teed up Rohan with one big pot in mind, and it's this. Um, I like the, the the draw doesn't worry me too much. Uh, it's got a speed to the side at Wilco right next to it. Um, I don't think we can be too dogmatic about the draw here. It seems to be very fair these days, um, so I'm not worried that. You know, a lot of people would say a high draw, but I, I don't think it, it matters. They were coming up the middle um, yesterday in the sprint. Um, and I think this is a plot, Kate, and I'm quite mm. keen on this. Um, and I will warn you that I haven't backed the winner of the Air Gold Cup since 1992. I don't know how old you were there. <laughs> then um, locks of in 1992. So it's, what, 31 years of hurt in the Air Gold <laughs> Cup for me. Um, so if I can release the Bok and get Rowan over the line. But I am quite keen on this. I'm definitely going to back this. And I don't often get too happy in these sprints. But like I say, this, this, doing this show has made me look at the race with greater detail than I normally do. And I just think this has been the plan all year, Rohan. And I think it, it's going to put up a, a, a good performance from a very, very attractive mark on Saturday. Obviously, you need a little bit of luck in the, the air gold cup. Things can happen. The draw can snooker. You can get a bad run. But I think it will go close. To end the 31-year drought then for Chris <laughs> as well. I mean, watching back that Asker race, that was a painful race. Yeah, well, well that's, that kind of is the Rohan style, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. it's either pain or it's glory, especially at Asker, where, where he loves. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Where, did he, where was he drawn single figures, Chris? He was, he was drawn just the other side of... Um, the, the Kevin Ryan horse. I, I was I was looking at the draw. I think middle to high is going to be favoured here, and I think that there has been three winners in the last decade of horses drawn in single figures. But they were ten years ago, nine years ago, and eight years ago. More recently, it's definitely uh, middle to high, which has favoured horses uh, on history. And I think the, the the pace map suits that as well. So uh, I wanted a horse drawn high. I also wanted a horse who's going to travel strongly because the ground is drying the air. It's good ground. There's also going to be a tailwind, and there's plenty of place on here. So. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a race that, you know, is you're going to need to travel strongly and you need to have that bit of boot. And even though he's eight years old, Jordan Electric still has that about him. Like, he has had an incredible year. Started the season rate at 72. He now resides on 102. But looking at his run last time out at York, you know, you'd still think that's a, it's a fair mark. And he's a four-time winner here at, at Air. So I, I think he can go close. Now, on the old Tracy's trends here as an eight-year-old, you know, you'd be chucking him out the window. But, oh, he's gone. But he's gone. Anyway. <laughs> but Summergan did win the race um, two years ago as an eight-year-old, so I'm hoping it's going to be a case of uh, history repeating itself. Now, he wasn't at his best this day uh, in the Shergar Cup. Um, maybe just got a little bit slow away for a horse who likes to race on the pace, and you know maybe he's a little bit better, better over further on quicker ground on a flatter track. But, you know, as I said, four-time winner there. Um, this was a decent race on the day, to be fair. I just think, even though uh, he's an eight-year-old, there could be a little bit more to come, and it'd be interesting to know if Paul Mulrennan was tossed and turning about uh, who he was going to ride here because he's plumped for the favour. But uh, I suspect this lad will go close if he's in good order. Yeah, if he is in good order, then like I say, he's at the perfect track for it. But you've teed it up beautifully then because it is the return of Tracy's Trends <laughs> as the drum roll sounds out then amongst the audience. Now, of course, a sporadic feature, it's fair to say, but we don't want to dilute the prestige by just rolling it out every single week. or <laughs> Either that or I forget to send over the info to the guys soon enough to create a graphic. But but either way, it is back. Now, the Air Gold Cup, one of my favourite races of the entire season to run these trends against. And there are so many consistent variables to hone in on. So, as you can see, we have the past five winners of the race. Now, as you can also tell there from the official rating of these horses, it suggests that you would want to mark as close to around 100 as possible. Middle to high draw, in brackets there, we have their draws. So middle to high draw, then, as Zach was just saying. And then we also have how they fared last time out. And again, bearing in mind, they are some big field competitive handicaps, the Portland the Stewards Cup that you want a horse that has run pretty well within those notable handicaps, even more significantly, therefore, the Stewards' Cup as well. Now, I like a horse that is rated 100, is drawn in 15, ran well last time out to finish fourth in the Stewards' Cup, and that horse is Mustapshire. A dual winner over a mile, admittedly, but and he perhaps looked like he went further than the six furlongs he got last time out at Goodwood, admittedly. But he also has the hold-up style that I want, and they tend to go a million 
in the Air Gold Cup, as we know, hence why horses off of the pace can come to the fore. And the stamina can also come to the fore for him as well in the closing stages, provided he just gets the splits when needed. So down one pound from last time out, I thought that Mustabshire would be the way to go. As we're seeing him running at Ascot, where he finished fourth in this one, another solid run. Big field handicaps don't inconvenience him. He's going to need the splits, of course, but he's well enough treated. And as I say, I'm hoping he still has more to offer as a sprinter. So then, Masabshir for me. Then we've also got Jordan Electrics for deck and Rohan for Chris. So at least we're giving you three horses to go at in what is a wide open event as it is every single year in the Air Gold Cup. Now, Chris is going to say where he is whilst deck and I toddle over to the sky pad for our best bets of the weekend. Now, over at the Skypad, as you can see, for our best bets. Now, we're going to mix up the boost again then, because, Zach, your next best is going to be boosted. It is correct, uh, but we'll start with the Napa thing, won't we? But uh, had to, really. Yeah, we will, because yeah. that's the, the, the best bet of the weekend for me. Uh, and we've already discussed it in the show. It's going to be involvement for the CRISPR team over at Newbury with uh, Bill Buick doing the <laughs> steering. Uh, son, well, very well bred, Son of to Vega. Uh, any of that rain that falls uh, at Newbury that's forecast, I think, will be uh, definitely in his favour. So involvement going to be the nap for me. And then the next best is going to be Persica, who is going to be boosted uh, by Chris. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, it looks a good race here. Happy to take on Phantom Fly at the prices with him carrying a penalty and Persica has just been really progressive this season. Uh, his Sandown um, win two starts ago was uh, was franked heavily and then also last time out I thought at Windsor the ground was just a little bit too soft for him in a good race. I think he'd appreciate good ground um, and probably in a slightly lesser race as well. And then the long shot. No, it's not, I really fancy this. I didn't want to just say Shagpile on the show <laughs> given the name but I actually really fancy her off, an 80, uh, off a mark of 85 I still think she's very uh, well treated on my own numbers but the big thing with her lads is I think she's been crying out for a stiff stamina test and she's finally going to get it here uh, so yeah those are going to be the three best bets for me so and up the shag pile you you didn't even you didn't even steal Chris's joke about shag pile from last night in the whatsapp group oh I there, missed it where he was asking for I'm just going to steal it and plagiarize his <laughs> joke yeah when it, Chris basically he asked for shag pile then to be boosted 33 to 1 double carpet it. Oi, uh, oi, there you go then. So I'm going to plagiarise it all then myself. But Chris, it's, it's the funniest thing anyone said in the WhatsApp <laughs> group since it began. So we had to get it out there at some point. But Dex, uh, next best is going to be Boosted Persica, 9 to 2, then 2, 5 to 1. Make sure to head to the website or to utilise the QR code in vision then to take advantage of that boost. Generous boost from you, Chris, and jokes are plenty. <laughs> Yeah, some might, some might say my jokes are certainly better than my um, selection of horses anyway. But anyway, uh, I've gone for um, Powerful Glory as my nap. Um, as, uh, the reasons being, as, as I said earlier, I think if there's a potential star in the race, it's Powerful Glory. So we're going to nap Powerful Glory. The next best is my leaner, my leaning horse, Democracy Dilemma, <laughs> the one I will be leaning as it gets get caught late. <laughs> Or getting caught late late on at Newbury and hopefully it holds on. But I, I do think that's a fair price. I think it should be a fair bit shorter than the tens. And all right, it's not a long shot, so you can take the it. It's only ten to one. But um, like I said uh, in in the show, uh, the more I looked at it, the more I was keener on Rohan. I definitely am going to back it, and I'm going to banish the 31 years of air gold cup hurt <laughs> the 31 years of drought then rohan trust me chris we've uh, we've delivered shorter long shots in our time on this show as well <laughs> we probably have to be fair <laughs> we will allow that and uh, rejoice and if rohan it goes in powerful glory though being boosted for chris 12 to 5 uh sorry 12 to 5 2 13 to 5 uh, there you go Dex. Oh, you. 13 oh. to 5 come on chris what are you doing man well, I, I, look, I'll give you, I'll give you a clue here, Deck. It, the, the, the boosting just follows the market and adds a couple of steps. So, if I had been a little, if I had been on the ball, I would have been sure that it wasn't. I was going to say you're either incredibly stingy or you really fancy this horse. No, I'll tell you, no, no, it's, it's, it, it was a technical thing, um, and if I'm invited back on the show, I will ensure just for you, Deck, that there are no silly prices, I promise you. Happy days. We look, Boswell's not here, so we'll just blame him. Yeah, we could definitely blame him for the 13 to 5. I couldn't wait to tell Deck about that price. <laughs> now, my own boost, though, I've got a far more conventional boost for my nap, which is going to be Mustabshire, as I mentioned previously. Why not? It's the Air Gold Cup weekend. Why not have a big swing in the racing at 12 to 1? 
one for the nap. Seeing as all seven trends that I ran against this race, he ticked all seven boxes. The only one to do so, and it's quite a rarity to find a horse that does that with my research. So on a tricky weekend to find that definite confident nap, I'm letting the trends lead me. Second best bet then, next best shadow of light in the group two Mill Reef. Perfect blend of experience and more to offer to rewrite what I thought was a bit of a wrong last time out. Second in the gym crack, get back to winning ways, hopefully in the Mill Reef and to prove his ability once again and can to continue to live up to that wonderful pedigree. And then my launcher also comes in the air gold cup and it's mainly the price and 14 to one about Glenn Finnan, who again, I ran the trends against this race. He ticked a lot of boxes age official rating draw running well to win last time out getting the right turnaround from last time I feel he might just be a bit of a lurker in here he also like my main play might want a bit further than this trip but I'd rather have horses on my side in the air gold cup with more stamina than those who will be on fumes and forcing me to lean a la Chris Paul then in the <laughs> final furlong so Glenn Fillon will do for me at a nice each way price and again we'd love to hear your best bet so make sure to drop us a comment in the section below but my nap though my sab share boosted 12 to 1 to 15 to 1 so there uh, you you've, round you've redeemed yourself you. chris you've redeemed yourself <laughs> pulled it back then well with you the could argue you could argue 15 is a bit of a, it's a bit <laughs> <odd> <laughs> <of> <laughs> <Chris Brown. laughs> comparison to what we're used to it's very very conventional <laughs> now so 15 to 1 yeah we will still take it though definitely so especially if i get a winning nap with that but that's everything from us on this week's show so big thank you to deck and of course then to Chris for standing yep. in and who knows we might even get Chris back the next week should Sam not return from whoever sag do he is on we will reveal all then next week on the show so make sure to tune in next Friday where we preview again the pick of the weekend action